Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, topology, which is basically the layout of your network uh, where you are going to have your devices, your computers, printers, uh, servers, or whatever it is that you might have on your network. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, something that you need to uh, take into consideration is going to be uh, the size. So do you have uh, two computers? Do you have 1,000? Do you have 500, 100, 20, 30? How many computers you have, uh, it's going to depend the type of network that you might want to have. Also, the maintenance of it. How much is it going to cost you to maintain this network, making sure that, you know, the cables, everything's proper, you know, after it's sitting there for a couple years and moving here and adjusting there and editing the layout. Uh, eventually, you're going to have to, you know, swap some cables and, and change some um some different connectors and, and ports and switches and, and all this. So the first one I'm going to, I'm going to talk about is going to be the point to point, which is the most simple well, one computer connected through either a coaxial cable or a twisted pair. And we'll talk more about what those are, but it's just uh, one computer connected directly to another computer. It's the most simplest form of, um, of a, of a layout of a network. The next one is going to be a peer-to-peer, -peer. and now uh, this could be a few more computers, it could be less, it can be one-to-one, -one, but basically the concept here is that if, say, uh, 192.168.1.1 wants to use uh, the printer over here on uh, 192.168.1.1, 1.2, then uh, it can because they all share each other's resources. So it's, if um, if dot two wants to access a website that the server on dot one has, then it just sends out a request and it's able to access it because it knows that it's part of its uh, of its network and they're all sharing resources. Same thing if dot one wants to use a printer of dot two, or maybe there's some files on the server uh, that dot two wants to reach, then it can access these files right over here. The next one would be a client server uh, topology, which uh, it's kind of how it sounds. Uh, basically, uh, the way that it works is that everything is centralized in the server uh, and you have these different clients. And um, the concept here is that you don't want to have to download and install any software uh, in, in the clients, or at least very, very minimally. You want everything to be accessed through the, through the server. Uh, same thing would use either coaxial or twisted pair here as well. Um, advantages of it is that it's centralized and it's easy for administrators to work with. Um, disadvantage would be if, that if the server goes down, then well, pretty much the clients can't access any of the information that they have here. And since so, so they're so reliant on it, then uh, you know that the clients just kind of only only can work with what they have installed there. Also, servers can be pretty expensive, so you probably won't see this in a home, um, but you probably see it in a small business, small office. Um, and also uh, another, I guess, disadvantage if you want to call it, is that uh, there's special software operating system that it's needed in order for the clients to know like okay this is all being shared and it's being accessed by the server and all that uh, next one is going to be the bus topology and uh, it's good to note that it's a unidirectional meaning that information can only go in one direction at a time so either this way or this way uh, and you have an acting server and we'll talk more about what that is but say uh, 1.1 wants to send information to four right down here what it does is that it sends out a broadcast. It'll send us information down this way, and then right here you're going to have a uh, BNC, a T connector, and that's going to go. The signal is going to go straight down this way, and then to the left and to the right. The reason why it does that is because there is no smart device here, like a switch, you know, sending it like, okay, we know that 1.4 is over here, so let's send it this way. It doesn't know that, so it just sends it in every single direction. So the information is going to go this way. It's going to go this way towards the terminator, and what a terminator is is that if the terminator was not here once you reach it once the information the signal reaches the end it will bounce back and then it could arrive here and then here and then here and then there's already a, a signal being sent to dot four and since it bounced back there'll be a second signal uh, sent to uh, to uh, dot four so it will think that there's perhaps two different computers or two different requests when that's not the case there's only one so in order to avoid all that information arrives over to uh, to the terminator and it terminates the signal. Uh, so when the information goes this way, it gets terminated. When it goes to the right, it will get to this other uh, uh, T connector and it will get to 1.2.2. Uh, uh, so 192.168.1.2. 
0.8 point sorry 0 0.1 point 0.2 and uh this server will say okay well this is not meant for me it's meant for dot four so ignore it and it will go here dot three not for me ignore it continue going uh dot four awesome it's mine but it will still continue going get to dot five not me ignore it get to the terminator and then terminate it once it's uh once it's arrived to the to the to the destination uh so there's this thing called a frame and the frame and it has the uh, source and destination source being the 1.1 uh, .1 and destination being the 1.4 but uh, in this frame in there there's going to be this thing called a arp uh, our protocol which is address resolution protocol and it's basically asking whoever has this address here please send me back your mac address so we'll send the mac address back because it knows a um it knows the destination so it'll broadcast back do the whole thing all over again until it reaches here now they both know each other's mac address and they can make a a, con a connection and now they can start sending each other whatever files they need to send to each other so a uh, t connector looks like this right here this is where the um the backbone of the uh, uh of this bus connector or the bus topology bus layout which is just all this right here this is what we call the buck the backbone or the spine and that's going to be right here and then every single um, computer or server or anything is going to be connected to this part right here which is this right here so backbone t connectors and then you have your different hosts devices printers servers whatever it might be so a um a twisted pair comes in two types. It comes in a unshielded twisted pair or a shielded twisted pair, uh, and it consists of four pairs of wires twisted against each other to prevent uh, interference or crosstalk or noise. Pretty much the same thing. And uh, a shielded twisted pair is similar to a unshielded twisted pair, but it comes with extra protection against electromagnetic uh, interference. Uh, and there's more to it. There's different color coding on a lot, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, coaxial cables uh, there are um, there are a 10 base 5 and a 10 base 2 the 10 uh, stands for 10 megabytes per second the base starts uh, stands for baseband and the 5 stands for the 500 meters that it can reach for every segment so it can have a uh, computer right here and then 500 meters and then another computer here now those 500 meters that's the max length before it starts uh, losing what do you want to call it? Uh, it start, starts uh, losing uh, its quality, if you will. It will start uh, dropping packages, and it's not something that you want. Uh, so this the base 5 is known as a thick coaxial cable, a thick net. Um, you could connect up to 100 devices if you have a, vi a vampire tap, which looks like, it looks like this. The backbone goes right here, and then it gets clamped in there, hence the name vampire. And then you're able to connect whatever it is they need to connect there. Um, the uh, uh, besides a vampire tap, if you want to have a hundred devices in there, you should also have a uh, CSMA, which stands for Carrier Sense uh, Multiple Axis Collision Collision Detection. Carrier Sense Multiple Axis uh, Collision Detection, and basically it just detects collisions. So as I was saying earlier, this is a unidirectional. So if say um, 1.5 and 4 want to send information to each other and they send information to each other at the same time the information is going to go here go this way and then same thing here this way and then there might be a collision right here which is not you know it's bad one is either going to uh, not either they're not going to receive the information they send to each other or they're going to get a corrupt file so what the carrier sense uh, does is that it senses it senses any kind of collision and then it gives a set random time so we'll say maybe 15 seconds for this one and, and uh, 20 seconds for this one so after 15 seconds it will resend the information and after 20 seconds it will resend information allowing for a gap uh, in there so they don't send it again at the same time uh, so those uh, that's what those are um, the base 2 is a little bit newer and it's called uh, or referred to as a thin ethernet or thin net cheaper net uh, same thing 10 megabytes per second and this one only goes per segment from one computer to the next one it goes a max of 180 the 2 is supposed to stand for 200 but I think they just rounded it up but it's actually only 180 and you can connect up to 30 devices uh, same thing uh, for this well not same thing but optionally you should also have a carrier sense uh, multiple axis collision detection on this one 
but there's not that many devices. So the chances of collision are still going to happen, but they will perhaps be less frequent. Uh, advantages of uh, this network here is that it's uh, it's easy to add a computer and it requires very little cable. It doesn't require very much cable. Um, and this advantage is that it is unidirectional and you might need or will need a CSMA CD. Uh, the entire network does shut. The entire network will shut down if there anything happens to the backbone. So if anything happens to this cable right here, then your entire network is not working anymore. It's 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 done. Uh, terminators are required. That's another uh, disadvantage, and it's difficult to identify an issue if there is any issue. So for example, say uh, this T connector here broke. Well, now you know that there's an issue and maybe there's, you know, you can't access information anymore. Signals are being bounced back because it's never reaching, it's not reaching the terminator anymore. So as the, um, as the, as the person who takes care of this network, you have to, okay, we'll figure out where it is. You don't know that it's right here. You don't know. It might be the computer. It might be the cable, it might be the tape connector. It might be this computer. Like you don't know what it is. So you have to do the whole legwork and you have to do the whole thing until you find out what uh, what the problem is and yeah you should know that this is not meant for large buildings so you know you can't have a th like microsoft would not be able to have this in their in their headquarters in their in their building next thing would be a star topology and the star topology uses a switch or a hub and it's also unidirectional um, i believe it could also be bi-directional but i usually see this unidirectional and the way that it works is that say dot four wants to send information to dot three to print something it sends the information here and if it's a switch then it just sends it to the printer it doesn't send it everywhere else because switches are considered smart devices now if it's a hub on the other hand it will reach the hub here and it will send it to every single one um and you can see if if, if this startup if the start to or star layout that you have has hundreds of devices it could clutter the entire network because now every single device is getting the information that was just meant for one right so um switch is smart device hub is a a dumb device uh, as it's called and that's the way it works wherever it is that you want to send it if it's a switch you'll send it to the correct spot uh, advantages of it easy to install um and uh, it requires a little bit of wiring, but it's easy to install. If one of the devices goes down, it doesn't disrupt the rest of the network. And it's also easy to detect if there's any faults. Um, so basically, uh, especially with the switch, so if you send information uh, from dot five to dot one, and you would be able to know like, okay, the issue is here. It's, it's with this computer or with this cable right here. It, it does allow you to know that disadvantages is that it does require more table than a bus topology and if the switch or the hub breaks down or fails then the whole network goes down so you can't talk to anybody anymore right because this thing is the one who's managing you know sending information wherever it's supposed to go uh, and it's also more expensive um, mainly because hubs and switches are more expensive than the wires and all that that you need, would need in a uh, bus topology now a tree layout or tree topology, uh, it's a mixture between a star and a bus topology. And basically, again, you have the backbone that goes all the way here from terminator to terminator, but you also have switches, right? And it branches out sort of like a tree. So say dot one wants to speak to or make a connection with uh, dot nine. I will send the broadcast, again, go to the terminator, keep going, go here, get ignored because it's not meant for it. Then get to this section right here where there's a switch. The switch will see, okay, well, there is no dot nine on, on my section here. So it ignores it. Next one says, okay, well, I have dot six and dot seven. So it's not here, but I do have another switch. So it sends it to the next switch and then uh, says, okay, 10. Well, I know exactly where dot nine is. It's right here. And now you made a connection, sends back its smack address and now dot one and dot nine. Uh, can communicate with each other because they know each other's MAC address because of ARP. Um, next up, we got the ring topology. And the ring topology uh, works best if it is a unidirectional uh, cabling system. Uh, so information, if the information is being sent in one direction, that would be best. So clockwise, counterclockwise, but just in one direction. If you have bidirectional and say, for example, uh, dot three is trying to send information to dot one, but dot two is trying to send information to dot six, you can have information that goes like this. And then this information is trying to go this way. 
you know, oh, sorry, this information is trying to go this way and this information is trying to go this way and they might collide somewhere here. So you don't want any of that. And then after that, you have to install, you have to assign one of these as a server and install uh, uh, CSMA CD for collision detection. And it's just more than what you want. So just have it sent in one direction. If dot six is starting to send to dot three and dot one is starting to send to dot four, then they both are going in the same direction. The chances of collision are greatly reduced. Um, so if you use unidirectional, there is no network server needed to control uh, the connectivity between the stations. So that's an advantage. Like I said, unidirectional, the chance of collision are greatly reduced. So that's an advantage. Disadvantages would be that um, all the data does have to pass through every single device. So from here to here, and this has to forward it to here, and this has to forward it to the next one, and next one, next one. So because of that, it, it just makes the network slightly slower, but it only gets... Um, it only gets uh, you only be able to tell when it's it's a large large uh, ring um, also the entire network would be uh, will be impacted if any of these uh, stations workstations goes down so if dot two goes down and you're sending you know you you have a unidirectional then dot six wants to send to dot three so you got dot six sends it to dot one but dot two is down it's failed so it can't forward it to dot three so now you have an issue here you can only send to dot one now you can't even send to dot five or dot four because you know you're only going in one direction so that, that would be that would be an issue there um also the hardware needed to connect all these stations uh tends to be more expensive than uh just having a switch for a star topology but but this could work for certain uh for certain people for certain, certain companies that that need this versus a star uh, now, a uh, mesh topology. Mesh topologies are usually more found in uh, uh, wide area networks more than they are in local area networks. So instead of having these uh, printers and computers and servers, more than likely when you have a, a mesh topology, you'll have routers and they're in these places. So you have these routers that they all communicate with each other um, and you'll have uh, routing tables so that they all know where each one of these routers are at. You can see here that they're all connected to each other. Um, and then say you have a, you'll have a router, uh, right? Instead of having a printer, you'll have a router right here and then on this end over here on this side you'll have another mesh uh or more, another mesh that connects to a bunch of other routers and then at some point you'll have a subnet where it might be say your home and you have a printer and a pc and a mac and and everything else that you have connected there um and then that can communicate to this router, which can communicate to a bunch of other routers, which have a bunch of other little sub networks. Um, so that's that's how a mesh topology. Mesh topologies are usually like the internet. The internet would be a mesh topology, a a mesh layout. Um, so this is what a base two uh, a coaxial cable looks like. The uh, base ten looks very similar just just thicker uh, the inside of it looks like this you might have seen this before whenever any uh comcast or your your um, internet provider might have shown up you connect this usually to a modem um, the terminators at the end of the boss topology look like this easy to connect easy to install um, the twisted pair look a little bit like this uh, the unshielded doesn't have this little middle middle shielding here and uh, it's just twisted that way um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That, that's, uh, a simple, quick rundown of topologies, um, and, uh, the different ways that you can connect, um, uh, different networks and how you can, uh, lay out your network. Again, take into consideration that you might need, uh, um, different one there is not one meant for you but there's one that will work best uh, for your for your network for your company for your um, for your business